Hello, welcome to Plant-Based and Ready to Race, fueling your fitness with a plant-based diet. My name is Dr. Teresa Wagner, and I'm an assistant professor in the School of Health Professions Lifestyle Health Sciences Department at the University of North Texas Health Science Center. I'm also a clinical executive and registered dietitian at Safer Care Texas. I've lived in Fort Worth, Texas my entire life, and I've run my share of Cowtown 5Ks and 10Ks. So I'm excited to share with you today some tips and tools for using a plant-based diet to fuel your fitness and run your race. People often don't think that plant-based diets can meet all of your recommendations for nutrients, but interestingly, you can. The key is to consume a variety of foods and the right amounts to meet your calorie needs. Follow the food group recommendations that you can find in the recommended dietary allowances for Americans, or you can also go to choosemyplate.gov and find your age, gender, and activity level in order to find out what those recommendations are for you. This will provide the right amount and variety of food for nutrient adequacy. Remember that carbohydrate is a major source of energy and important for running races or walking on the trails for your fitness routine. So about 45 to 65% of your diet should come from carbohydrates. Plant-based athletes should focus also on protein, iron, calcium, zinc, and vitamin B12. And we'll talk more about that in the slides that follow. Plant-based diets don't necessarily mean that you go without meat or other protein sources, but they also can include fish, dairy, or eggs to help provide some of these nutrients. So if we look at a vegan MyPlate, uh, many of you might be familiar with MyPlate.gov where the uh, nutrition recommendations are found that help you to plan a healthy plate. And those can still be used even if you're using a plant-based diet. But this particular one uh, talks about vegan plant-based diets so that you can identify those food sources if you are going more towards a vegan plant-based diet that you would want to use to meet those nutrient needs that we talked about. So plant-based zinc sources, which is an important nutrient, include many types of beans, zinc fortified breakfast cereals, wheat germ, and pumpkin seeds. Plant-based iron sources include breakfast cereals, spinach, kidney beans, black-eyed peas, lentils, turnip greens, molasses, whole wheat breads, peas, and some dried fruits. And plant-based foods fortified with vitamin B12 are necessary to get vitamin B12 because we know that it is only found in animal sources. So if you're not consuming any dairy or other types of meat or fish, then it would be important that you use B12 fortified foods. Plant-based calcium sources can include calcium fortified soy milk or breakfast cereals, orange juice, tofu made with calcium sulfate, and some dark green leafy vegetables. Plant-based sources of protein include beans, nuts, nut butters, peas, and soy products. Protein is important in the body because there are several functions that protein serves. In fact, it's the structural material in muscles, connective tissue, organs, and it helps to carry iron in your blood in the form of hemoglobin. It also maintains and repairs protein containing tissues as mentioned above, and also serves as the basic component of enzymes, hormones, and other biologically important chemicals that help your body to run normally and in good health. Protein can also serve as an energy source, helps maintain body fluid balance, and helps maintain acid-base balance in your body fluids. All of these are important for your body to run in the way that it should and maintain proper health and wellness. Some plant-based proteins that um, 
are vegetarian can be combined in order to make a meal. Um, some things like rice and black beans, hummus and bread, corn and black eyed peas, bulgur and lentils, tofu and rice, corn and lima beans, tortillas with refried beans, my favorite, and um, pea soup and bread. But you also, if you're following a vegetarian diet, might consider combined um, plantain, plant protein sources, as I mentioned, but other foods that you could substitute vegetables instead of meat that you would typically add, such as pasta primavera, veggie pizza, vegetable lasagna, but vegetable lo mein and veggie burritos or tacos. There are some plant-based products on the market that can help you to meet your nutrient needs with some variety and are convenient if you don't have time to cook a plant-based meal to meet your requirements every day. People often think that amino acid supplements are needed on a plant-based diet or that they will help to build more muscle. And what amino acids are, are the individual building blocks of protein. So people who take high intakes of individual amino acids could actually disrupt normal protein production and could do more harm in their body than good. So one example is methionine, which actually can worsen symptoms of schizophrenia that uh, may or may not have been observant, observed prior to taking an excess of methionine. It also promotes hardening of the arteries, impairs fetal and infant development, and can cause nausea, vomiting, bad breath, and constipation. So generally, we don't recommend that people take any type of supplements, but especially amino acid supplements in individual formats. It is important, however, to have protein to recover from your workout or from your race. Um, muscle size and strength is built from diet and training. So we know that eating a high quality diet um, with about 15 to 20 grams of protein within an hour of your workout can help you to recover and to rebuild that muscle that may have been torn down through a hard bout of exercise, such as a 10K, a marathon, a half marathon, or just a hard um, weight workout. Uh, as I mentioned before, supplement purity and dose and safety are not guaranteed. So again, it's better to get your protein from food. We talked about some plant-based sources of protein prior. And um, also, if you are someone who consumes animal protein, then any of those sources, such as lean meats, dairy, and fish, and poultry, can meet your protein needs. In the US, the average protein intake exceeds RDAs or the recommended dietary allowances. So we don't really need to take a protein supplement. As I mentioned, it's easy to get the protein that you need through your foods. So when you are working out hard, and especially if you're training for a marathon or a race, you do need possibly to have snacks in between your meals in order to meet your increased calorie needs from that extra exercise. Some plant-based sources of snacks include almond, soy, coconut, or rice yogurt, which you can have either flavored or unflavored with fruit, depending on your calorie needs, um, or just use fresh fruit if you don't want sugar in your yogurt. You can also consume eight to 16 ounces of low fat chocolate, almond, rice, or soy milk, a granola bar, or a bowl of cereal with eight ounces of plain low fat almond, rice, or soy milk. Boost or boost dairy free juices, ener ensure energy shakes, toast, crackers, veggies, or pretzels with peanut butter or hummus, energy bars that happen to be plant based, or trail mix with Gatorade. 
a smoothie made with one to two cups of low fat almond or soy milk with fruit and ice, whole grain waffles with peanut butter, and bananas with a handful of nuts. All of these would be great nutritious snacks that are plant-based. So how much protein do we actually need? Well, the average non-athlete just needs about 0.8 to one gram per kilogram of body weight per day. So that would be about 80 grams of protein for the average person per day. Most of us eat a lot more than um, just the 80 grams that we potentially need. Uh, it could be higher, Again, based on your body size, amount of muscle mass, how much activity you're doing, all of these things. But only about 10 to 35% of our total calories should be coming from protein. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics um, and the Dietitians of Canada and the American College of Sports Medicine all recommend about 1.2 to 2.0 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day for athletes, depending on the amount of training that's done. But we don't ever recommend that someone take more than two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight because it taxes the kidneys and it's difficult for your body to um, excrete and, and thus why it um, is hard on your kidneys. So protein intake should be spaced throughout the day and after workouts for recovery. So what happens when we eat too much protein or we're taking a lot of protein supplements? Well, consumption of 45% of total calories from protein is considered to be too high and can actually cause nausea, weakness, and diarrhea. High protein diets implicated in the development of weak bones, kidney stones, cancer, heart disease, and obesity. So you can see that there are adverse effects of eating too much protein. So it's not necessarily that more is better. And very high protein diets may cause death after several weeks. Um, it can dehydrate you and also cause something called rabbit fever.